So the United States has historically had internment camps, detainment camps, whatever the fuck you want to call them. They're all technically concentration camps. I yelled at the uh, Holocaust Museum earlier today on Twitter. It really pissed off a lot of people because I posted it on my Instagram as well. People were very upset at me for saying some things that are 100% true, 1000% true, and absolutely fucking preposterous that the Holocaust Museum would use their influence, their influence to, to, to claim that a, a current atrocity is not as bad uh, because it's not literally the Holocaust. What a fucking insane uh, turn of events for an institution that is literally designed to educate people on genocides, okay? An institution that is literally designed to educate people on genocides with the sole purpose that they do not happen again, okay? That's literally what never again implies. That's what that means. It's like, hey, Holocaust, bad. Look at all of the bad things that happened during the Holocaust. Let's not do that again. Let's not allow that to happen again. To, we must learn from history in order not to repeat those mistakes, right? But the Holocaust Museum was like, wrong, doesn't matter, not literally the Holocaust. This is not 1945. Fuck you. This is not 1942. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, that's really tasteless, sis. Okay, so let's see what... Uh, so the U.S. Holocaust Museum put out a statement... Okay, uh, they said that the uh, unequ they unequivocally reject efforts to create an analogy between the Holocaust and other events, whether historical or contemporary. That position is repeatedly and unambiguously has been made clear in the museum's official statement on the matter, a statement that is reiterated and reaffirmed now. The link to the museum statement is here. The museum further reiterates that a statement ascribed to the museum staff historian regarding recent attempts to an a analogize the situation in the United States southern border to concentration camps in Europe during 1930s and 1940s does not reflect the position of the museum. The museum deeply regrets any offense to Holocaust survivors and others they may uh, that others they ma that might have been endangered by that statement ascribed to the museum historian in a personal capacity. Okay, so. Incredible, incredible statement. Thank you so much, uh, United States uh, Holocaust Memorial Museum. I didn't realize that uh, Holocaust happened in a vacuum and that, you know, your entire purpose uh, as a museum is to just be like, hey, the Holocaust happened. That's it. Don't take any, don't, don't learn anything from that, okay? Don't learn anything from that. It just happened. That's it. That's, it happened. It was bad. It happened. But don't, don't think about that any further. Very nice. Uh, very nice. Okay. So that's really cool that the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, uh, said that. And, and I was already frustrated. Okay. I was very frustrated with this because I remember seeing a petition on the internet talking about Elliot Abrams at the time that, uh, the United States government decided he should be the one to deal with Venezuela. Now, some of you are probably unfamiliar with who Elliot Abrams is. Elliot Abrams is one of the key uh, figures in a position of power uh, during uh, some of the most atrocious uh, war crimes that we committed in uh, Latin American countries. He essentially participated in the cover-up of, uh, not genocide, I don't think it's genocide, well, some of the things that he covered up were literally fucking genocide, okay? But it was in Latin America, so not the same, not the same. It was in Latin American countries, so not the same when, uh, when people would like literally fucking throw babies up in the air and, and shove a bayonet inside of those babies. It's atrocities, but it's not the same. Not as bad. Here's why I will tell you it's not as bad. They literally made Elliot Abrams sit on the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Got Elliot Abrams to sit on, and I say this with no Jewish irony whatsoever does not equal on its Holocaust. committee of Same conscience, okay? Elliot Abrams, a person who is famous for, uh, a, a person who is famous for covering up United States atrocities. The fact that we participated in uh, near genocide conditions in Latin America by arming paramilitary groups, okay? Um, that guy who covered up our involvement is literally sitting on the committee of consciousness for the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. 
It's so good. The, it's just fucking insane, dude. Just so you understand, this is the mentality of neoliberal institutions. This is the mentality of liberal institutions. So these people are not necessarily your friends, okay? Just don't fucking forget it. Because ultimately, Elliot Abrams is a good guy, okay? He's a company man. He's a guy who's always been on the right side because he's been on the side of the U.S. government. Um, for people who are uh, asking for sources, here you go. Elliot Abrams, Holocaust Museum. Um, there is a petition that got uh, 46,000 votes, but it's probably not going to go anywhere anyway. For years, the United States funded, trained, and provided arms to Central American dictatorships and military groups that tortured and murdered thousands of innocent people. Elliot Abrams was a key architect of the United States' involvement. Today, he is Trump's special envoy to Venezuela. It is terrifying to imagine that someone like Abrams, again, has the power to spark a civil war that would destroy the lives of millions. It is also outrageous that someone like Abrams would be honored in a memorial to the victims of the Holocaust. Since 2009, Abrams has served on the Council of Conscience at the Holocaust Memorial Museum. Abrams should never have been on the museum's council in the first place, and certainly not now when he is back in a position to threaten the lives of people in Latin America. But Elliot Abrams has the best conscience, folks. He has the best conscience. When he was working with the Reagan and George W. Bush administrations and helped lead uh, and help lead and cover up some of the most inhumane acts of American foreign uh, policy history in recent years, he had the best conscience. Okay. It was such good conscience, folks. Such good conscience. As an assistant secretary of state for Reagan, Abrams helped cover up the mass murder of 800 villagers by a Salvadoran military unit created and trained by the U.S. Army. For the record, I'm gonna the the thing that I told you guys about the baby being thrown into the air and getting fucking bayoneted. That was this, okay? That was the Salvadoran military unit that would go into farms of indigenous people and literally just go in mom is uh you know a mom is out milking the cow or whatever and uh vegans don't get triggered yes they were milking cows i'm sorry and and the army would come in and literally take all the fucking little children okay and they would cut their heads off and they would make make these like fucking uh reenactments these dramatic reenactments okay after cutting the heads off of all the little kids and then when the mom would come back that is what the scenario would be this is the kind of atrocity that Elliot Abrams covered up, okay? This is the kind of shit that we facilitated. This is, these, this is the kind of murder, the, the, the kind of murderous rampage that we helped in El Salvador, in, in uh, Guatemala, Honduras, in uh, numerous different Latin American nations as we worked to destabilize nations and install puppet leaderships. Uh, and that is precisely why I'm mad all the time, G-Ball. That's why I'm mad. So, anyway, as I was saying, really cool that, you know, this guy who uh, was, was uh, Nicaragua, uh, exactly. This guy is, uh, is, is on the Committee of Consciousness, guys, at the U.S. Holocaust Museum, okay? And one of my favorite things about this uh, predicament is, on the one hand, the people are like, oh, you're downplaying the Holocaust, which, of course, I understand is perhaps one of the worst things, if not literally the worst thing that has ever happened to humans by other humans, okay? Uh, I'm not in the business of, of uh, figuring out, like, what is the most atrocious crime that we have ever committed against our fellow humans. I don't know, okay? But I understand that it is one of the worst fucking things that has happened in in near history okay i understand that so I, I what i don't understand is like those people are like oh you're belittling that but then on the other hand they're like you're too much of a pussy about what's going on in the detainment in the concentration camps that are happening on the border right now so like am i am i a pussy or am i ruthless am i being a pussy when i say uh this is uh this this these these camps are fucking insane or am I the ruthless, calculated person who's like, the Holocaust isn't a fucking big deal. Look at me comparing it to something that's not even a big deal. Native American genocide, Congo slavery, I don't want to rank them, but everything is terrible. I understand, Sean Lee. That's why I said I can't, uh, that's why I said I can't uh, figure that out. Or I'm not in the business of figuring out the scale of what's more atrocious and what's not. Fucking just so annoying. 
This is kind of worrying that you can't trust museums or research institutions like Brookings. Academic institutions should be extremely reliable, but if that is compromised or trust in academic institutions diminishes further, that is real bad. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm I mean, not I've said this before. Arcane failure. I've said this uh, uh, many times before. Okay. Um, you have to always, you have to always think critically, and look at what the source of information is and and why they're coming out with this information regardless of regardless of uh, whether or not it's an academic study or not obviously like brookings is different because it's a think tank uh, the Brookings brookings institute is not like an academic institution i mean they use academics to conduct studies and whatnot but it's still a think tank it's a political think tank that is like center left i would say <laughs> so the, 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 and this is how I, people ask me like, how, how do you figure out what's real news and what's fake news? Like, how can you figure this stuff out? And I say the same exact thing. Like I consume all manner of news and there is still uh, it, these, all of these outlets that I criticize routinely, like the New York times or the Associated Press or Washington Post, like they have incredible journalists God. that are doing objective and incredible journalism. And they're, they're still telling the truth in a lot of issues. On a lot of matters you just have to rigor, figure out kind of like the way i've explained to you guys how uh, state broadcasters operate you have to figure out what those key points are that you know that there is going to be a vested interest in in covering a story in a specific way okay like the new york times is not the new york times is not trash it's still uh, uh, an incredibly important institution uh, neither is the washington post but you know, you're probably not going to see a lot of negative coverage on Washington Post when it comes to Jeff Bezos. I, I don't know. I don't know how much editorial control he doesn't have or does have, but I wouldn't be shocked if they weren't fucking, uh, they weren't necessarily dunking on Jeff Bezos on a regular basis. He owns the fucking, uh, he owns it. You can't trust Al Jazeera when it comes to uh, matters involving uh, Qatari interest. You can't trust Tere Te. The Turkish Broadcasting Company, uh, the the public broadcasting service, when it comes to matters involving Turkish domestic interests and foreign interests, but you can absolutely rely on them when it comes to different things that don't pertain to Qatari interests or Turkish interests, and that's the way you, that you're supposed to analyze uh, these outlets, and that's exactly the way I analyze uh, the Brookings Institute when they come out with a study or whatever. Uh, Deep State said we don't need nuance when we have ideological purity. I've